Good morning. How is everybody doing today? So today is the first day of April. Um, I know that in my own personal family, we have not really done any April Fools um, around the house. So I'd be interested to know if you guys have. But today what we're going to do is we're going to actually celebrate April showers. So we're going to be looking at this really cute drawing. I need to give full credit where credit is due. I pulled this project from Art Projects for Kids. It's a fantastic website that has a load of really great art projects on it. So I don't want people to think that um, I've stolen content. I'm, I'm graciously um, using, using and utilizing this content from Art Projects for Kids. So I did change a few things about it, but I, I do want you to know where, where the idea came from. So let's get ourselves started. For today's project, you're going to want to have your pencil and eraser. You're going to want to have markers and you're going to want to have crayons. And then any of these materials can be completely switched out for other materials. So if you have a Sharpie that you want to do all your drawing in, or if you have colored pencils that you want to use today, it's completely up to you. I'm going to be walking you through the framework of drawing this child jumping in a puddle. And um, I'm even going to add a few more extra elements to it as we're going along. So as you can see, we're going to be creating this giant umbrella. So let me switch to my blank paper. And this umbrella is going to be huge. In fact, I want your umbrella to um, be the same size as an adult hand. So if you're a child doing it, you're going to make it even bigger than your hand. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by putting a little dot right at the top of my top of my my middle finger up there. OK, and then I'm going to go down to the bottom and I'm going to draw a dot where the bottom of my hand was. OK, so you can see how my whole hand fits inside there. So that's going to be the top of the umbrella and the bottom of the umbrella. Now for the sides of the umbrella, I'm going to go to either side over here. So it's going to make kind of like a diamond of dots. And I'm going to do two dots side by side or across from one another. OK, now to create the other half of my umbrella, because that's half of it. Now I'm going to make four more dots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these two dots right here. I'm going to go to the middle and then I'm going to go up a little bit. So I went in between these two dots, started in the middle and I went up a little bit. OK, and I'm going to do this in all four places. So one, go to the middle, go up a little bit Two, go in between these two dots, find the middle, go out a little bit. Three, find these two dots, go to the middle, go out a little bit Four. So I've basically created my own dot to dot. So let's go ahead and connect these. Now you can actually do this two ways. You can do them as straight lines or you can bubble them a little bit so that it looks a little bit more like the edge of an umbrella. So I think I'm actually going to do that today where I'm going to make just very, very tiny rainbows, like almost like a rainbow that got sat on. It's a curved line, but it's just a little bit curved. Okay. So there's two, sorry. I do not know why YouTube hates my autofocus. We've been having these problems all week. Okay. All right. There we go. So then three, four. Now, as I go along the bottom, so I did kind of like bubbly lines at the top. As I go along the bottom, I'm actually going to switch it up a little bit so that it's that flattened rainbow, but I'm actually bringing the rainbow in towards the umbrella instead of out. Two, three, four. So I did four with the umbrella going up and four with the umbrella going back. Now, if you do not want to have bubbled lines, just do straight lines. I did straight lines on my sample piece. So if you want to do straight lines, that's perfectly fine. Now, to find the top point of our umbrella, 
what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go in between these two dots at the top. So I've got my very top dot. I'm going to go to one each one on either side. And then I'm going to go to the middle and I'm going to go down a little bit. Okay. So now I can draw um, these lines that just connect to my center of my umbrella. Look how easy that is. Wow, that was pretty easy, wasn't it? Now, let's go ahead and start building our child that's underneath it, okay? So I need to make sure that I keep everything in proportion. So I wanna make sure that all my pieces stack on top of one another because we're gonna build him or her from the top down, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the middle of each of those bottom ones and I'm gonna draw two lines that go straight down. From that bottom point, I'm gonna make sure that the lines go two finger lengths below the, the bottom point. So then I actually liked doing a little wavy line at the bottom for the bottom of the jacket. You can do it as a straight line, you can do it as a curved line, it's really up to you, okay? Now for the shorts on my little kiddo, I'm going to go down again with two lines and see, I'm just stair stacking them. I'm just going in a little bit on either side. And again, it's going to be between one and two finger lengths wide. And I'm going to go across. I'm going to do a straight line on this one. And to make it short, so I'm just going to put a little line in the middle. Okay. I think I did actually do them a little bit wavy before when I did my sample piece. And now I can draw the legs. I'm just going to use about one finger length for the legs. Okay. So now I've got jacket, shorts, legs. Now for the boots, this is really kind of fun. Okay. Do you guys remember ages ago when we did our bug jars? We're going to do that same trick to create some depth in feel. So I'm going to take a little loop around the edge. Do you see that? I look like a little sideways letter J. And then I can do the same thing over here. I start a little bit up go all the way over, okay? Now for the bottom of the boots, I'm gonna to go to the middle and I'm actually going to put a little bit of an edge on the bottom there so that it looks like the curve on the back of a boot. And then I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna curve it a little bit. Okay, now this is actually probably what I would say is the most complicated part of this entire drawing. I'm going to draw a line that goes straight down and lines up with the back heel. Okay. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to create a line like this. Okay. What I'm doing, I need to pull it down a little bit. I am going to create a diagonal line and I'm doing that diagonal line on purpose. That diagonal line actually makes it look like my kid's boot is going back in space. So instead of having a flat line, which is the way we draw people a lot of times is with a flat line as the bottom of the foot. And that's why it always looks like our feet are coming out from our bodies completely sideways. But if I use a fairly small diagonal line, now it looks like my boot is going off into space. Okay. Now let's create that puddle. The puddle's really fun because the puddle is an organic shape Organic means that it's free form. It can take any shape that it wants. I'm just gonna make a blob. I tried to make sure that the blob line from that side to that side was the same. I think I need to add a little bit more definition on that side. So I'm just gonna play with it a little bit, okay? And then the other thing I thought about adding afterwards was I was gonna make some rain blobs, that, some puddle blobs that come out. And I'm just using upside down teardrops so that now it looks like he just jumped in. So now I've got that completely drawn. Now the way that we're going to be coloring our project today, this is really fun. We are actually going to be coloring our project today the way that I used to color when I was a kid. 
So what I used to do as a child was I would take markers and I would outline things with markers and then I would color them in with crayons. I always love doing that. Now I'm adding a little bit more to this today. So you're going to have all your markers. I'm not going to be using my neutral colors too much. I'll leave them handy, but I don't want to use them too much. I want this to be bright and colorful, okay? So you're just going to pick a section of your umbrella. And I'm using the broad side of these broad tips to make a nice thick line. And you're going to outline each section of your umbrella. And then inside the umbrella, you can choose whatever kind of line and design you want. So maybe I want a swirly line that kind of looks like springs going through there. I don't know if you can hear the birds outside of my house right now, but they sound so wonderful. It definitely feels like spring when I hear birds. I'm going to recommend that you use yellow pretty early on because I've talked about this before. Yellow markers have the least amount of pigment in them. And because they have the least amount of pigment, it means that they get muddied very easily. I'm going to use diagonal lines in here. That means that they get muddied very easily from other colors. Okay. And so I want to use yellow early because I don't want to mess up my yellow marker because we all know that icky greenish gray color that gets um, used up. Now, if you want, you could make a pattern out of the colors. So let's say that I had two colors, like I wanted to use green and purple. I could use green and purple to make whatever I want. Did you guys notice that I'm skipping every other one right now? That is a little bit on purpose. Let's use zigzag lines on this one. I skipped every other one so that it gives my marker time to dry. And it, it actually kind of, it's not a hard, fast rule. It's just something that I'm doing. Um, I like it because then my markers stay nicer for longer if I don't color over wet marker with another marker. All right, what do I want to use here? I can use my polka dots here. Oh, that's going to look like, like a slice of pizza. That's funny. Let's say you start a design and you don't like it. That's all right. You are allowed to like or not like whatever you want on here. Okay. Polka dots. And then now I can start going in between. Now I'm not going to color in that one because I just did the purple. So when I do my next layer of colors, I'm actually going to just color right up against. That's why I wanted to wait for them to dry. I'm going to color right up against each of those. Let's do some wavy lines. I haven't done any wavy lines yet. We'll get some really nice wavy lines going on here. Do you guys see, this is very similar to our landscapes, how I'm using simple lines to create complex patterns. It ends up giving it a lot of depth without a huge amount of effort. It's also very relaxing. All right, I haven't used my blue yet. If you have a large array of colors, you could do so many different colors on here. I just have my basic 10 pack here. See, and I want these to be right up against one another. So I'm gonna very gently go through. Okay, do that. Let's see here. Oh, I could do my seashells or not seashells, my sea waves. So let me show you how to do this. This is a really fun design. You can do it two ways. You can go up and around and make waves like that. Or this is how I cheat. I make the letter C. Now watch what I do, okay? I did four letter Cs. Now I go to the top of this letter C, wrap it back and join it to the next letter C. Isn't that cool? So I'll show you again. I'm only gonna fit three this time. One, two, three. Okay, go to the top, wrap it over, and draw it to the next one. 
just with letter C's. All right, I'm gonna keep going here. So if you have not caught from my postings, this will be my last live video um, this week. Next week, I will start on Tuesdays and Wednesdays bringing out new content, new lessons. And on Tuesday or on Mondays, I will be teaching. Let's do some. Ooh, let's do some Starburst looking lines. On Mondays, I'll be teaching an art lesson similar to what I've been doing most days. Oh, that looks great. And on, and I'm going to have to repeat a color because I only have seven colors because I have a basic marker pack. And I'm not in the mood to use my neutral colors today. I want this to be super bright and colorful. So on Wednesdays, I will be doing in the afternoons a makerspace project. And I already have next week's figured out. And I'm really excited about it. I'm going to use my letter C a different way this time. Make sound waves. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. So I am going to now speed up just a little bit because, um, yeah, I think we've got, I think we've got the handle on this. You can pick whatever colors you want and you're going to just trace everything in marker. And I can do, let's see here, let's do some green shorts. And like I said, I wasn't going to promise that I wasn't going to use my neutral colors. I just wasn't going to use them in the umbrella. Now, I when I was doing my sample, I did originally outline this in yellow, but it just did not show up as yellow tends to do. So I want you, if you want to have yellow boots, I would recommend outlining them in black. And then for my puddle, I'm going to make a puddle line that looks like ripples. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my outside line. And then on my inside line, I'm just going to follow the same line, except for get a little bit smaller. Get a little bit smaller. And. They're not going to fit very much in there. A little bit smaller. Okay. Oh, let me outline my drops coming off. Something else that uh, this original lesson did was they cut the person out and mounted them on black paper. And that looked really cool. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of rain. I'm just going to use my marker to make little dashes of rain. Is anybody else singing in their head? Raindrops keep falling on my head. I actually don't even know the origin of that song. All right. Glad I could be here to entertain you. Almost done. The last thing that you're going to do before you finish up is you're going to find crayons that match the colors. Now, this would be really fun. Color it however you want. I am showing you one way to do it. There are a bajillion different ways to color something. So do not feel like you have to color something the exact same way that I color it. Don't ever feel like you need to use the exact same patterns I use. I bet you guys have some very creative patterns locked up in your heads that you want to get out on paper today. Okay. But you're just going to go through and you're going to color. And this is how I always colored as a kid. I wish that I could find, I had this Barbie coloring book when I was a child and I colored every single page like this. And I remember methodically going through that Barbie coloring book. And I am sure that it has long since been thrown out from the house. But you never know what you're going to find in the attic. So you're just going to go through and you're just going to color everything. This is a pretty simple step. So I'm not going to um, take time to color the whole thing while I'm on screen with you. But I just want to encourage you guys. Go out there 
have fun, be creative, have an absolutely wonderful day. I will see you next week. Um, next Monday will be an art lesson. Next Wednesday will be a makerspace lesson. And they're going to be in the afternoon. They're going to be at 2.30 in the afternoon instead of 10 in the morning. Thank you so much for spending this time with me today. And I look forward to seeing you again. All right. Bye.